Hey guys, today let's talk about top 5 Space Marine Terminators and which one is the best Terminator squad in 40k. So without further ado, let's dive right in. And first is the regular Terminator squad, the most basic option available and also the cheapest one which is quite important because these guys tend to get quite expensive. For the price, you're getting a classic Terminator stat line of 3 wounds, toughness 5, 2 plus save and 4 plus invulnerable save which is a huge upgrade compared to the 9th edition levels. In that sense, Terminators are a very interesting sweet spot of uh, size quantity of models which also impacts your ability because you cannot just point a very very high damage gun at them and kill half a squad unless that has mortal wounds or something but you still have a lot of that toughness and also a high save characteristic so it's not efficient to shoot with something like a tornado of bolter shots at them for the offense, they have an option of either Chain Fists or Power Fists. I personally do like Chain Fists more. They're both 3 attacks each, a Strength 8, AP 2, Damage 2, but Chain Fists hit on 4s instead of 3s with the Power Fist, but do gain Anti-Vehicle 3 plus rule, which does help quite a lot, as you can imagine, because most vehicles are at least Toughness 9. And that's a good trade in my opinion, especially if you're going to be targeting an Oath unit, which they have a special rule when you're targeting such a unit you get plus one to hit in addition to the full reroll so hitting on threes with full rerolls you're going to be fine but in exchange you will be wounding vehicles very well as if you are strength 14 or something for shooting the squad wields your regular storm bolters which are not great and i hope one day bolter weaponry will be the cool thing that it is in the actual lore of warhammer for now it's just uh, plinking shots that if you're lucky can kill off uh, maybe an orc but the squad can take heavy weapon one per five guys and that can be a cyclone missile launcher which is in addition to the storm bolter so that's why i like it so much flamer and assault cannon flamer and assault cannon are like meh i'm not sure i like them plus the assault cannon is not dual barrel so you're not getting twin linked so you're not getting four reels so the best you can hope for is rolling a six to wound to get the dev wound so i like the cycle and missile launcher the best and why i think it's good is because it has two attacks a strength nine ap2 damage d6 which is a good profile against quite a variety of targets it can be good against most vehicles and monsters especially something lighter in the toughness scale and also against elite infantry stuff like that it also has 36 inch range so you will be reaching most things that you want to shoot at and they do have the teleport homer rule which i personally dislike and think should be something else uh, because uh, putting a marker that then you can use rapid ingress on so you have to be on the in dip strike to use that and they as far as i know don't have a way to go back into reserves from that board so you have to start them in reserves and then you have to put them onto that marker which someone can be on that marker and it specifically says that you cannot deploy there if there's someone on the marker so <sighs> I don't like how the teleport homer mechanic works, especially considering that you can have something much cooler in that second ability slot for them. Overall, a good affordable unit, though a bit lackluster, I agree. And as always, if your faction, custodies, space marines or any other requires this kind of approach to find out the best combos, the best units, check out my Patreon where I provide personal guidance on how to build the list of your dreams. Links are in the description. Talking about something more interesting, the Death Watch Terminators, they are the special cousins of the previous contender, they are almost identical apart from a few quirks which we'll discuss, they do cost 42 points per model, so quite a bit more expensive, 5 points more expensive per model, so 25 points per unit of 5. You may ask, why do they cost more? So the answer here is that because they can carry up to three Cyclone missile launchers or other heavy gun, which you don't want, as we discussed before, per five guys, which makes a very big difference. And funnily enough, that doesn't scale to 10-man squad, so you cannot have six guys in the squad carrying Cyclone missile launchers. We were very close to be having something cool, actually, in the Death Watch units, but unfortunately, GW doesn't want us to have that for now. Hopefully they'll change that in the codex. So the best use for these guys is five-man units that you deploy as sort of uh, tactical uh, self-reliant squads, which are supposed to act independently and secure their own parts of the battlefield, targeting something that is 
reasonably far, far away with their cycle missile launchers whilst also charging in and uh, doing some damage in combat. Talking about that, the second difference between the Death Watch Terminators and the regular ones is that you can mix and match the assault and the regular loadouts for these. So three guys can have the Cyclones as we discussed and the Power Fists and two can carry the Thunder Hammer and Storm Shield loadout with four wounds per guy sort of bodyguarding the more expansive model and also being better in combat because Thunder Hammer is better than Power Fist. Not a bad kind of a five-man unit. And this squad also doesn't have the plus one to hit ability that we had on the previous contender, though they do have the Assault Terminator version of the rule, which is forcing a battle shock onto any unit that they charge and any unit that they get into engagement range with on the charge. Nothing to write home about, but can be useful sometimes, especially if uh, several of these are charging into one squad and one of these squads, your opponent's squads, you don't want to use some sort of defensive strategy on, so they may fail one of those battle shocks and be prevented from using that. Next is Terminator Assault Squad. It's a melee only version of the Terminators we've seen in number five. They are slightly more expensive than the regular ones at 39 points per model, which is still quite cheap and only two points per model more expensive than the standard ones. They lack any kind of firepower but they compensate that by accessing the melee loadouts which are the lightning claws which is five attacks strength five AP two damage one with twin linked or thunder hammer storm shield which is three attacks a strength eight damage two AP two and dev wounds. Obviously the shield model also gets four wounds so they're significantly less vulnerable to three damage attacks than the regular terminators however the two damage attacks will kill them just as efficiently unless you give them a fill no pain which is why i like to run them in black templars detachment so much because there we can get them up to five plus fill no pain or have just the six plus fill no pain if you're running the correct vow for a four wound model that will help tremendously against two damage threats because not rolling one six in four dice is going to be quite difficult and you will often do that Next are the Deathwing Knights, the new beautiful and shiny models. They are the ultimate melee unit you have for the Dark Angels. They do cost a lot at 47 points per model. I hope they will get a discount at some point because I think that's a bit overblown, especially considering that their melee profiles are good, but they're not that good. But in general, they do combine two very important characteristics for such a unit. First one is durability. Unless you have some way to deliver your term Terminators lightning fast across the tabletop, passing all the screens and everything, and right into the heart of battle, you want your Terminators to be able to take a punch. Moreover, once they engage, you want them to be able to stay alive as long as possible, drawing your opponent's resources to them, whilst your other resources are free and can chip away at your opponent's army. They have a standard uh, profile for the shield Terminators, which is toughness 5, 4 wounds, 2 plus safe, 4 plus invulnerable safe, but they also get minus 1 damage, which completely shifts their durability map. Damage 2 doesn't work against them anymore. Damage 4 doesn't work against them anymore. Damage 3 is the only thing that will work against them pretty reasonably well. For 1 CP in inner circle detachment, you can also get minus 1 to wound for them, conditionally of course only for attacks that are high strength of their toughness, which most of them will probably be. Offensively, they are also good as i just as i discussed before they're not as good what i mean by that is you really need a boost for their ap like for example running them as a part of gladius detachment they do hit on twos which they should be as they are veterans of the highest order and their maces are four attacks each at strength six ap one damage two which I think is uh, just unreasonable because we know, for example, the Grey Knights, they have four attacks each, strength six, AP two, damage two, which that is a good profile. And AP two is enough for most applications where AP one just doesn't make sense. If it was strength six, AP one, damage three, then that would make sense. A damage two just doesn't compute in my head. However, if you add something like on the chapter to that from the Gladius Detachment, then it becomes a pretty good profile. Or you can go for the Power Swords instead, which are five attacks, so one attack more, strength six, so the same strength, higher AP, but damage one. Sergeant obviously hits hard, he has a couple of weapon options, which Relic 
weapon is probably the better one which gives him strength 7 ap2 damage 2 and also lethal hits and six attacks so probably the sword option for now is the better one but who knows what happens in the future and if you're running them as inner circle detachment which i think is what you should be doing considering how cool that is uh, you also get one cp martial mastery stratagem with, which gives you reroll to wound if you are on the vowed objective or reroll once to wound uh, in all other cases which in combination with plus one to wound from the vowed target detachment rule will mean that they actually do quite a lot of damage in combat the only issue being the ap or the damage depending on which weapon you chose. Number one, the Grey Knights Terminators. I might be a little bit biased here because I'm just such a big fan of Grey Knights. And in particular, I have a big love towards the Brotherhood Terminators. But to be honest, all things considered, I believe the Brotherhood Terminators to be the most balanced overall and the must-have Terminator unit for their particular faction. They cost 42 points per model, they combine great durability of the basic Terminator body, but in addition to that, they get to, for free, revive a guy into the squad every battle round. Which is good not only because you can have multiple squads of these wounded and reviving models which can get up to 100 or something points back every round, you are also getting some tactical benefits like for example reviving a model closer to your opponent's unit that you want to charge making your charge about two or three inches closer cannot unfortunately use that to get a better charge out of dip strike that would be a bit too much but still they're also great in melee they have strength six ap2 damage two with four attacks which is a sweet spot between volume of attacks which is 20 for the squad of five and quality which the that is a high quality profile. Plus you can always enhance that with chaplains plus one to wound and you also get a lethal hits on the charge. So if necessary, they can tackle something like a high toughness unit quite efficiently. Their inbuilt mobility is unlike any other Terminator type in the game, of course, because that's Grey Knights and they have teleportation available every round and they can, if we are using the only detachment we, can, we have access to now, they have automatic six inch Advance. and sometimes that is useful because you may not want to remove your unit from the board you may want to just move closer to for example get your i don't know librarian closer to the target they are also battle lines so they have base oc1 unlike all the other terminators we looked at today and they go up to oc3 with the free banner that you have in the squad and that banner doesn't take away from your melee unlike uh, the poor custodies for example which even though we used to have have an ability to have a banner on the custodian guard and have a spear for now for some reason we don't have that so only wardens have the spear plus the banner the regular custodian guard don't in that sense the gray knights have an advantage so whatever you're doing the brotherhood terminators are just a must have for the gray knights and if i could have the this unit with this set of abilities in any kind of space marine list i would definitely gladly pay the 420 points for the squad of 10. let me know if i have missed some very important very good terminator unit which i very well might have thank you for watching i'll see you next time